Welcome to the 15-Minute Financial Feast Podcast, bringing you 15-minute segments to help you retire with purpose on time. We're serving up food for thought and bread for the head. Are you hungry to learn? Here are your hosts, Mark Triplett and Troy Westendorf. Hey, everyone. Welcome to our 15-Minute Financial Feast. My name is Mark Triplett. Troy Westendorf. And today we're going to be talking specifically about whether or not you should roll your old 401k. Now, I just recently read an article, Troy, that um, there, the number of 401ks left behind by folks um, is outstanding. It was, I mean, they were, I think it was like 2.5 trillion or something like that, that left in, in 401ks. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, the, the article, it was staggering that. Um, so many folks have left old 401ks behind. I think the average balance was somewhere around 50,000 too. So it's not like they're they're leaving small accounts behind. But um, one of the questions that recently came up at one of our workshops was uh, somebody wanted to know, what are the pros and cons of rolling my 401k? Should I leave it there when I move on to uh, a new employer? Should I consolidate it with my existing employer? Or if they're retiring, should they leave it in the 401k rather than roll it? So we're going to kind of talk through what are the, What are the pros and the cons of rolling your old 401k when you're no longer with that employer? Sound good? Yeah. Let's do it. So let's start with some of the advantages. Um, When you talk about advantages, one of the things we listed was it can be lower cost. Can be. Uh, Doesn't necessarily mean it will always be, but typically they're a little bit lower cost. Uh, Early retirement. So if you're planning to retire prior to age 59 and a half, uh, you can access at 55, so you can access a little bit earlier if they're planning on retiring early. And before we leave that one, too, let's clarify. You still have to pay taxes on the distribution. Yes. But um, if you have a 401k and you do retire early, for early meaning you know, 55 but not yet 59 and a half, right. and you want to make distributions out of, that, uh, out of your pre-tax accounts, if you take distributions from an IRA prior to 59 and a half, you will be assessed a 10% penalty for early withdrawal. However, with the 401k, there's a provision that allows you to access that from age 55 to age 59 and a half and still not have to pay that 10% penalty. You still have to pay taxes. So if somebody's going to retire early and they're planning on doing so, um, it might make sense to leave some of your 401k there in order to be able to access those pre-tax dollars prior to age 59 and a half. Yeah. Yep. And, and then the last one, Mark, that we talked about was uh, you can take a loan, which we normally don't recommend, but it is one of the advantages. You can take a loan out against your 401k. Um, again, we don't recommend it. would be a last, last course option for us, but it is available. Yep. Um, some of the disadvantages, on the other hand, Usually there's going to be limited investment options. I mean, not usually, but every 401k Almost has always. an investment. <laughs> every 401k is going to have an investment menu. It's part of the, the plan uh, requirements when they set those up. That investment menu could be as few as maybe three different investment options. Um, yeah. It could be many more. You could have 30, 40 different investment options. Usually there are going to be some target date funds in there. Uh, there may be some... Um, equity investment options, stock market uh, indexes, for example, or stock market funds, large cap, mid cap, small cap, um, international, probably going to have some fixed income funds in there. Um, You know, those are going to be your, your, uh, you know, your high grade uh, investment grade bond funds all the way to maybe some high yield bond funds. And then typically there's, there's going to be like a stable value fund. But if you check all those boxes off, Typically, you're going to be somewhere around the you know, maybe 10 to 30 investment option range. Oh. And outside of your 401k, there are endless options. Yes. Uh, so that the one of the disadvantages is going to be that limited investment menu. You know, those two in the 401k plans, you see a lot more and more of the target date funds to choose from. It's not even as many single investment options like a large cap, small cap. It's a lot of the mixed all in one. Yeah, and, and the target date funds, um, boy, we could do a session on right. that by themselves. Yeah. What are the pros and cons of target date funds? But target date funds have become pretty much a mainstay in mm-hmm. just about every 401k today. And often they are the, they are the default option um, when you start with an employer um, 
by default, they put you in a targeted yep. fund, and then you have to change that investment option if you want to do something different. Uh, but anyway, we'll we'll uh, we'll leave the target date fund discussion for another day. Um, another thing that we see as a disadvantage or could be a disadvantage is that you get little to no advice. I mean, you're you're basically on your own. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that four hundred one ks are defined contribution plans. You define what you contribute. You define how you invest within the investment menu. Uh, the plan sponsor, aka your employer is not going to provide investment advice. Uh, typically, the advisor who is working with the plan sponsor and has a fiduciary relationship with the plan sponsor, your employer, is not going to give you investment advice on how to allocate. Um, they may advise you on how the 401k works and come in and do a, a, you know, a, a kind of an open enrollment class or something like that, but to sit down individually and tell you how to invest, you're on your own. Right. It's totally up to you. And when you leave that employer, you're still on your own. Mm -hmm. The employer has no responsibility to manage that for you in any way, shape, or form. It is your your asset. And if you don't take it with you or do something with it, it's just going to sit there however it was and nobody's paying attention to it. Nope. Um, Lack of flexibility is another one. I mean, Plan document is going to govern what you can and cannot do with those assets inside that 401k. Um, definitely IRS tax rules come into play as well. But uh, there, there's often a lack of flexibility on what you can and cannot do within your plan. And the inability to convert to a Roth IRA, I think this is something that needs to be spoken about. Uh, generally speaking, your 401k, it, it, you, you don't have the ability to convert pre-tax dollars to or uh, never taxed dollars. Uh, in order to do so, you'll have to take that out of the 401k, roll it to a, an IRA, and then you can start doing conversions on your IRA. I saw one plan, and all the time we've really? been doing this, I saw one plan that gave the oh, wow, option yeah. wow. to do a conversion internally. So maybe we'll see more of that in the future, but that is not that that is the exception, not the norm. Hmm. So when might you want to? Um, actually keep your 401k, Troy. So if you plan to retire early, which we kind of mentioned that, if it's, you know, between 55 and 59 and a half, which is we would call early, um, you would you would want to keep keep your 401k or keep some in there for those dollars, and we could budget accordingly on what they need. Uh, if you have an outstanding loan against it, so if you have a loan on your 401k and you say, you know what, I'm going to roll all this over and close out my 401k, or maybe you're leaving your employer, that is going to be a taxable event. So you will get a 1099 on whatever you owe for that loan, and you're going to pay tax on those dollars. So if you're leaving, you want to make sure you pay that loan back prior to that or just know that it's going to be added to your income for that year. Yeah, and if you're not able to pay it back, then that's another reason why you might want to just hang Keep on it to it until you can. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to realize that taxable income on top of whatever your current income right, is. Right, exactly. Uh, so, so second point, Mark, when would you want to roll to an IRA, roll your 401k to an IRA? So if you separated from service, for example, and you're no longer with that employer and you want to um, basically self-direct the, those plan assets however you want with unlimited investment options or nearly unlimited investment options, then you might want to roll that to an IRA or you control it. Have and, control it. Yeah, and an IRA uh, stands for Individual Retirement Arrangement. So we, we often hear folks say Individual Retirement Account. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, if you look at the IRS publication that uh, governs uh, IRAs, it says Individual Retirement Arrangement. But it's an individual account. You get to direct it however you want. And there are all different types of ways to invest that and all different types of investment options. Uh, much more so. So that's one reason. You might also uh, want to do some strategic tax planning. If you're wanting to do some Roth conversions, for example, it might be a reason to take that old 401k, roll it to an IRA, and now start doing strategic uh, partial Roth conversions on an annual basis, taking advantage of the current tax rates under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which are lower. We have a completely different uh, uh, podcast on that topic alone. Um, but that might be a reason why you want to. Um, because you're doing some strategic tax planning. And lastly, you want to create an income that you cannot outlive. And uh, really, there are ways to, for for folks that don't have a pension income from an employer, which very few have that today, a very small percentage of the 
of the working population uh-huh. has that as an option. Um, you might want to consider taking some of your dollars that are in your pre-tax accounts, like a 401k or IRA or other IOU, the IRS, and use those dollars to create an income stream that you cannot outlive that can complement Social Security. Uh, so that way you have a baseline level of income coming into your household in retirement, um, allowing you to maintain that lifestyle adjusted for inflation. So that might be a reason. You want to create an income stream that you can't outlive to complement Social Security. Sure. Uh, so, so some of the things to, to know before making a move, obviously the process of rolling the 401k without paying penalties or taxes, uh, we've walked several clients through this process, so we kind of have a grasp on it, but if you're doing it on your own, it can get a little, a little dicey when you're trying to do these things. It seems complicated to us. It doesn't seem complicated because we do it all the time, but for a client, it can get complicated. So you need to make sure uh, you know, the process for the 401k transfer without paying those penalties or taxes. Well, and there's enough for us to keep up on. Each custodian is different. Yep. So each, each, each custodian or financial institution that is holding those plan assets has different procedures, mm-hmm. different paperwork, different processes. Uh, we do it day in and day out, week right. in and week out. So for us, it's, it's you know, pretty comfortable and routine. But can, I can only imagine, I mean, most folks are only going to do this maybe once, twice, Oh, time yeah. stops in their yeah. entire life. Yeah, exactly. So it can be extremely complex and confusing to the point where some folks are just going to throw up their hands and say, I'll just keep it there. Yeah. Which is maybe why, <laughs> maybe why those numbers are so high and they do mm-hmm. keep it there. Uh, but, and then on top of it, we got the pre-tax, we got the after tax, maybe they got a Roth 401k now that they're contributing to. Some of the plans are allowing that. So maybe there's a combination of both. So when you're going to make those transitions, you need to make sure it's going to like account. So if it's Correct. going to, to that traditional IRA or it needs to go to that Roth IRA, you need to have those accounts set in place. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times we've um, we've gone to assist a, a client that wants to roll over their 401k. And by the time we're on the phone with the custodian, we find out that uh, not only do they have their 401k with the balance that they assumed, but part of that balance is actually an after-tax account. Mm-hmm. Well, what does mm-hmm. that mean? Well, it's, that means those are dollars that were you paid taxes on them, but they were contributed to the 401k. So they're after-tax contributions. Well, what's unique about an after-tax contribution? Well, you can actually roll that to a Roth IRA. Mm-hmm. So why would you want to take those dollars and put them in a pre-tax account? That wouldn't make any sense. Right. You already paid taxes on them. And then you, you might also, in addition to that, have Roth contributions as well. Yep. So, um, and then there's this thing called net unrealized appreciation. We, we run into this um, fairly frequently, and sometimes it makes sense to take advantage of it. I won't go into the total details because you get real deep in the weeds there, but um, net unrealized appreciation. If you own company stock inside of your 401k, there's a special tax treatment that can be applied to that that can be extremely tax advantaged if you know what you're doing and how to take advantage of it. Um, it generally is going to uh, apply when you know, you're working for a company and maybe um, you're, you're loading up on that company stock, like Microsoft or let's say Costco or, or some other company where you bought shares of those stock of, the, of that stock inside of your plan over the years, and you have a very low cost basis or what you paid for the the, the shares mm-hmm. is very low, and they've highly appreciated. Um, it might make sense to take advantage of net unrealized appreciation, but you really have to know how to do that. It's a completely, oftentimes a completely different team at the 401k plan administrator, right. no. uh, at the custodian rather, that handles this. And you have to know exactly what you're doing and how to receive it and tax consequences of all of this. That can get quite complicated, um, even to determine whether you should do it and then to actually execute it. It's completely different. That's it's mm-hmm. another set of complications mm-hmm. in that. So um, those are those are some of the things that you need to know before you make that move. Um, what are the tax consequences and what are the procedures? What is my 401k actually made up of pre-tax, after-tax, Roth, a combination of all of those? And then do I have the, do I have highly appreciated company stock that I could take advantage of net unrealized appreciation on? And how, how, am, how am I going to go about doing that? Um, so those are things to really get your arms around before you make any moves. That's it for this week's show. We covered quite yeah, a bit. Covered quite a bit. Uh, if, if you if you have questions about today's topic or another topic regarding financial planning, schedule a call with our team or one of our team members or visit 
www.mypt5.com. It's mypt5.com. And, uh, and you can submit your questions there. Um, we hope you, you found value in today's discussion. Until next time, if somebody, uh, if somebody you know is struggling with making these type of decisions and they're really confused about what to do, let them know that there are folks out there that can assist them. Um, there are there are financial professionals that do know what they're doing, uh, and and they can reach out to uh, to those folks and get the help they need. I'm your host, Mark Triplett. I'm Troy Westendorf. We're serving up some bread for the head. Mark. Until next time, every dollar has a purpose, Troy. And every dollar has a timeline. Until next time, be sure that you're taking the steps to retire with purpose and on time. You've been listening to the 15-Minute Financial Feast podcast. Remember, every dollar has a purpose and every dollar has a timeline. If you have questions about today's topic, schedule a call with a team member. Visit www.mypt5.com. Until next time, be sure you're taking steps to retire with purpose on time. Mark Triplett is an investment advisor representative of and advisory services offered through Royal Fund Management, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Nothing contained in this program should be considered an offer to buy or sell securities. Different investments have different risks associated with them, and not all investments are appropriate for all investors.